We are now recording again. Welcome to the psychology pre-registration um, workshop. My name is Ms. Young. I'm the senior academic advisor for graduation and programs. My primary responsibility as an advisor is graduation clearance. So I work with juniors and seniors to make sure that they can graduate in a timely manner. Um, for right now, your advisor is out. So I will be working with psychology um, freshmen and sophomores. So you kind of lucked out for the first semester. You actually got the person who handles graduation. So everything that I tell you is pretty much going to be what you need to be on track and to stay on track. And I'll explain what being on the track is because that's the number one question I get from students. On a freshman level, it doesn't make sense for you to ask that question because you just got on the track. So it doesn't really affect you until you start um, making some mistakes and things of that nature, which we're going to go over right now. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to cut off my video so that we can focus strictly on what I'm going over. All right, so this is my screen. My screen will look a little bit different because I am an advisor. So some of the stuff you see, I see that you will not see. Um, but Carrie will go over it briefly just to explain everything to you. So the first thing is to log into your Bison web. So if you haven't done that, please go ahead and do that now. You will see student services. And when you click on student services, boxes will open. You will have student related options. So you will have um, registration, which will be highlighted in a peach pink color. And then next to it will be a student record. I would like for you to click on the student records option. And when you click on that, you will get these options or well, some of these options. In the middle column at the bottom, you'll see the link for degree work. So you're going to click on degree works until it actually opens up into your degree scheme. Now remember I'm an advisor so my information is going to be looking different. Yours will open up into a screen. I'm going to use my dummy account <clears throat> which is just blank. All right. So for the sake of this, because I'm going to help everyone make a schedule today that is going to be successful, I'm going to focus mostly on the major and not the minor. So psychology major with your co-ops requirements are the courses that I'm going to focus on. However, if you know what you want to make your minor, then you can, when I interject some courses, you can just add a minor course to it and I'll tell you when to do that. So. Um, if you have not been to Technology Toolbox on Thursdays at 3 o'clock, I suggest you go. I give you all the tips on how to use it. Everyone so far has really liked it and felt that it was quite helpful and it relieved a lot of stress. So I suggest you come in on a Thursday. It is recorded, so I'll put that on the video on YouTube as well. So I'm going to use the feature called What If, and I'm going to update my section to the psych major. Yours should already be open. All right, so remember, I'm only going to focus on the major right now because that's what we need. And you have until the end of your sophomore year to actually declare your minor. So take some time to kind of figure out what it is you actually want to minor in. And I'll answer questions about the minor later. All right, so I'm going to do process what if so that I can see the scheme for me, but yours again should already be up. So I'm not going to go in detail about everything on here because that is technology toolbox on Thursdays. Today we're strictly going to make a schedule. So I have my scheme up. It has my co ops requirements, which are all my general education courses. You may see your courses highlighted. So a green check means you have completed it. So you should only see a green if you transferred in courses. If you see the blue section, it means two things. You are currently registered for that course and you're in the process of completing it. Or it may say two lines, nearly complete, see an advisor. Now, if you see this in your English section, disregard it. It does that for everyone who transfers in an English. So the, the requirement is fulfilled. There's nothing else you need to do. All right. 
And then it has my major requirements. So I'm gonna split my screen. And I'm going to pull up my academic plan. So if you haven't done so already, you can put in your name. I don't know why my name is so huge. All right, and you can put in the date. I'm not gonna go through all of this. Your psych major, when you're sending this to me, you will um, have all this filled out though because I'll need to know who I'm talking to. All right, and then you'll um, have down here your fall 2020 schedule. So let's go into making your schedule. Your fall is already complete because you've already registered based on your advisor. So we're gonna put in our current psych schedule. So for some of you, it will vary. So just put in whatever um, your, your current schedule is right now. So if you have psych 016, and that's worth one credit. And then you have psych 001, which is worth four credits. And it's four credits because it has a lab, okay? Um, if you don't remember, you can go down to your site block in your major and what's highlighted will tell you what's currently um, your register for. You also will have an option down at the bottom and will say your in-progress classes. So scroll down to your in-progress and then fill in the box for everything. I usually do the major courses first because they have a lab and if you don't add your major course first, you're going to get a time conflict for everything else because of the lab. So always add your site courses first. Um, so the next one is gonna be your priority courses. Priority courses are courses in your general education requirements that have levels to them. And you have to take them in order in order to actually um, finish on time. So we make them priority. And the next priority, the first priority is gonna be the English. If you're in an English course right now, you're looking at the code for your English. If you are looking for this sheet, it was sent to you via email. So go back to your email and, and pull up the attachment. The attachment has this worksheet, my apologies. And you can take notes for right now um, if you want to. And again, this is being recorded. So you can always go back and watch the video when, when I send it to you. All right, so we have Psych 016. We have Psych 001, and now I'm gonna pick a priority course. I'm in English, ENGW, pay attention to your code, because that's how you find your next course. And ENGW just starts, stands for English writing. ENGL will be an English literature. But since I'm in the writing course that completes my composition, I'm gonna continue in the ENGW. So let's say I'm in English 102 right now, English 102. And let's say that I'm in my second priority, which is a math, because you need two levels of a math. That's why we made it a priority. So they put me in the basic math, which is fine with me, which is algebra one, okay? My next priority course is gonna be a language, but not everyone got a language. So for right now, I'll just list that um, language is a priority course because you have to do four levels of it. It takes two years and four semesters, but everyone probably got an Afro cluster class. So for right now, I'm gonna choose an Afro cluster class. So Afro 005. So English is three credits, math is three credits, and Afro is three credits. So then I'm always tracking my, my um, credit hours here because I need to know um, how many credits I do every semester because that's how you calculate how far you are to 120. And you're in progress at the bottom, you'll always be able to see up at the top how many credits you're currently registered for. 
and over to credits applied. So it will always tell you how many credits are being applied to your current 120 credits. So right hey, now, Sean, yes. Um, you should probably tell them about um, the minimum credits and how it varies per scholarship. Okay. All right. So for the minimum credits, Howard has a theme called um, GOT15. So in the past, the credit requirement, the minimum, the minimum requirement to remain financial at Howard University is 12 credits. That's, you always have to maintain 12 to be considered financial and to receive aid. However, in 2020, Howard University increased the scholarship credit requirement to 15. So everyone starting in the semester of fall 2020 now has to have at least 15 credits in order to maintain their scholarship, okay? So even if you are um, thinking about dropping a course or you wanna just do 12 credits, if you have a scholarship, remember you have to do 15. Um, you can always look at your scholarship contract to determine if there are any other stipulations that may warrant you being able to be simply at 12 or 13 or at 14, or you can contact the financial aid or your advisor to find out um, if you're able to be less than 15 for any reason. There are some caveats and some extenuating circumstances, but those all depend on the student and the situation. So for right now, if you're a scholarship holder at Howard University, your requirement is 15 per semester. And that will give you 30 at the, en at the end of your year to meet your scholarship requirement, as well as your GPA requirement per the different scholarships that you at, that are um, given at Howard, okay? If you're a natural science major, I recommend you do between 16 and 17 credits because if you decide that you need to drop a course or the course is not doing well, you will always remain at least financial at Howard University. And then we can discuss if you can make up the credit hours in another semester to make sure that you keep your scholarship. But if you always do exactly 15 or exactly 12 and you need to drop something, you're going to be in a total panic um, about your scholarship and also about um, passing your courses for that semester. So try to stay between the 16 and 17 credit range if you are a natural science major. All right, so we have three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14 credits right here. Um, sometimes for this freshman, we usually add a HHPL course that will give you exactly 15, or we may add a, another course to get you to 17 credits. So I'll do another priority course, which will be the language, and I'll just add Spanish 1 for the example, okay? All right, so now this is my, my fall schedule. It is set. You can't switch any courses. It's done. So now, that should give me 17, right? I said 14. So now I'm going to make the spring schedule, all right? So in order to make the spring schedule, you must understand what you have on your fall schedule because some of these courses will then carry over to the second part in the spring. So you'll go down to your major again. All right, and then we're gonna scroll over to the spring semester. All right, so in this box, you can either put the CRN number. The CRN numbers are going to be like a five-digit number next to the course, or you can actually add the course code, which I've added right here. So for time's sake, I've added the course code here. You can add the course code here if you like. Um, you can also leave this space open for CRNs, all right? All right, so I've done Psych 016. I've done Psych 001. So the next one on my block is Psych 002. So I'm going to add Psych 002. And that's going to be four credits. And the way that I know, I'm going to click on Psych 002. And the box is going to open up and tell me that it's four credits. And the course is Research Design and Methods. You can cut and paste and write the course name if that helps you whichever one works for you. I see that the prerequisite is 001. 
and I'm currently in that and I plan to pass. So yes, I can register for this course. Down here is telling me that it will be available in the spring of 2021 and it's giving me the CRN number. And that is very important when we teach you how to actually go in and register. So I'm going to look at the sections and the time. So it's 30 out of 30, which means no one has registered yet. It's 30 seats out of 30. So registration is not open. So I'm going to pick a time and remember freshmen, you are a freshman. So by the time you get to your perfect time frame, it may not be available. So you'll have to pick maybe two or three options that fit what you want to take it. So for the time's sake, I'm going to put Tuesday and Thursday, which looks like my lecture course. And I'm going to pick the Friday lab from two to three. That, um, and keep in mind that will take a big block of your day. So what I'm going to do is go to free schedule, free college schedule maker. Sorry, I wanted to do a new schedule. All right, and I'm going to add in the time frame. So Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2, was it 2.10? Yes, 2.10. And what was it from 3.30? Yes, 3.30. Both of these are PM, so Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the course title is going to be Site 002, and again, you can put Research Design. I'm just doing this for time's sake, um, and this is going to be Lecture and Lab, and you can fill in this information, but we already know everything right now is going to be Zoom um, until we hear about the spring. And then I'm going to add that course to my schedule. So now I can see what it will look like if I tried to register for that course. Okay. And I have it here. So I'm keeping track of my credits. I'm going to go back to my degree works. Now that you've done Psych 001, you have now met the prerequisite requirement for you to take other electives in your psych, or you can add the minor. So I'm going to just put a basic course here and say the topic, which is could add minor or another psych elective. And that elective will be your choice. And most minor and elective courses are going to be three credits. Okay. Um, for the sake of this, I'm going to choose. Let's see what's available. If the course shows no time frame, it means it's not available in that semester. Um, so cognitive psychology is open. Mm, not feeling so cognitive. Okay, let's do developmental. Oh, that's a late time. So I need to look at my time frame and see if that's something I can do. And remember, everything in registration is going to be on military time. So I think this let out at 3.30, which was, what, 16? And then that one started at 17. So yeah, I would have a, a couple, like an hour or so break, maybe. Um, so let's add developmental as my elective. So I'm going to add psych 002. I'm sorry, 022. And that's going to be for Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, I might have a whole beautiful schedule on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, so let's see, that was what, four? Um, four to six, I think that was. Was that four to six? Yeah. Four to. Oh, five to seven. Mm. Um, and let's do this was psych developmental. All right, and then you can change the colors if you like, um, just so you can highlight it. We know this is going to be a Zoom session, and this is only a lecture because it's three credits. 
right. So right now I can see what my schedule is shaping out for. I can see if I want to add another one on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or I want afternoon, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you're on the West Coast, you might want to get your courses as late as possible. East Coast people may be trying to get theirs as early as possible, so you may not run into any issues. So um, now I have my two site courses. Remember, if you want to add a minor, you can add your minor in the option of the second site, or you can do both. Um, so I'm gonna go back up to my priority. I'm looking over at my, my English. So I had ENGW 102, so I need to go to the next English, which is English Composition 2. And my next English is gonna be 103. So I'm going to add ENGW 103. And if we were in a one-on-one -on -one session, you actually would be writing this and, and saying all this. But since we're in the session, I'm just going to talk. All right. So I'm going to open up my English 103 option and see what's available. Mm, very, a lot of times are available. So right now I'm able to get everything on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I'm going to try to get Tuesdays and Thursdays again, but it seems like everything is overlapping. <sighs> That's a problem. Um, I would have to do a morning session. So maybe a 940 to 11. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that late. Oh, here we go. A Tuesday, Thursday. This may give me a time conflict because I think the other class started at. This is three forty. Hmm. Let's try it. So ENGW for Tuesdays and Thursdays, and maybe a time conflict because I didn't put in a seven, um, a four ten but let's try it. You do not have to map yours back to back like this. I'm just doing this for time's sake. So ENGW, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to do, what was that? Three forty. And you also can leave this part blank or just put in um, a, what do we start at? Um, four, three, 45 or 350. That way you won't run into time conflicts on here, but you would have to remember that um, your court, your, what time your actual course started. Okay. Oh, wrong time. Sorry. All right. So now it's telling me that I can't take that class because I have a time conflict with this course. So I will have to pick another time to take it. Um, so we're going to pick a, just a morning session, a one to uh, they don't have any one to two o'clock one. So let's just do a Tuesday, Thursday from 940. What was that? 940 to 11. And this is going to be lecture because it's three credits. It's 103. And we're going to add it in the spot. So now I still have my courses on Tuesdays and Thursdays right now. So I'm going to go back over to my courses and see what else I had. I had math. So I'm going to go back over to my degree works and go to my math section and see what my options are. As a psych major, you are required to take two maths. However, if you've taken um, calculus one this semester or you've transferred in calculus one, you are exempt from a second math. You do not have to take another math, okay? 
Um, if you have not taken Calculus 1 and you will be taking the exam um, coming up or you are taking any one of the other lower level maths, then you will be required to take the second math. So I started in Math 006, which is Algebra 1. And I'm not trying to stress myself. I'm just going to take statistics to help me prepare for my psych, psych, psych statistics. Or you can take pre-calculus, you can take um, patterns in math, or you can take Algebra 2 once you've um, mastered the Algebra 1 level. Okay, so I'm going to choose for this because I want to make sure I do good in my psych statistics, which is a combination of lecture and math. Um, so I'm going to put math 009, and that's going to be four credits. Ooh, and that is every day, it looks like. So Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday for one. Okay, so Monday, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, or Thursdays. Ooh, interesting. Um, so let's do the um, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from 11 to 12. And I'm doing a bad job of doing the CRN numbers, but you can write your CRN numbers next to each one as you make it. So we're going to do math 009. And that was at, um, which one did I pick? 11 to 12? 11, 10 to 12. And remember to change it to 12 p.m. And it definitely is a lecture slash lab. And you can add the Zoom if you like. And that was Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. And then we're going to add the course. So it looks like it will be um, on Thursdays, I'll have an extra class, which will be my math lecture and lab, which is probably just going to be the lab course for that. Okay. And you can go back and add the CRN number for that in the section if you like and add it in the block. So you'll remember. All right, I'm going to go back over to my courses. I have Afro 005. You do not have to take another Afro cluster. Once you fulfill that requirement, you only need one. So this is your free agent choice. You can choose a divisional if you like. You can choose philosophy if you like. You can choose speech if you didn't have it this semester. Okay, so I'm going to choose a divisional. And divisionals are humanities for A, so that's art, literature, music, and theater. Divisional B and C are social sciences. So that could be econ, history, Afro cluster classes, political science, and sociology. And then divisional D are natural science courses. If you are taking math, your two math courses will count for two of these requirements. So you will essentially finish it just by completing your math requirement. It will fulfill the requirement, but it will not give you double credit. So you will still have to make sure that you hit 120 credits. And I'll answer questions about that later. All right, so for the sake of this, because no one likes to really take divisional A's, I'm gonna choose a divisional A, and then I'm gonna recommend what divisionals you should actually try to register for. But remember, I'm gonna give you suggestions and I'm giving you suggestions based on feedback from other students and also what I know to be good classes for you to take for what you actually wanna do when you graduate. So um, these classes may be filled by the time it's time for you to register, but you can always try to register as, you, um, as your classification increases. All right, so for divisional A is my choice. I recommend you just write the word DIV or divisional A so that you can remember that you need a divisional A and you do not just put the name of the class because if you're not able to get in that class, 
you will start to panic and say, oh, I need another class. I want able to get in that class. But if you just put the word divisional A or Diva A, then you'll remember that it can be any divisional A in this category. I have given you the divisional A sheet. It was a attachment in the email that you received. So you can pull it up and see what the divisional A's and I'm gonna explain what they are as well. So for the sake of this, I'm just gonna open up one divisional A. So this is women in literature, which is a divisional A category, which is worth three credits. You can read it based on the code. So this HUMA is, stands for humanities and then the code for the class is 107, okay? Now, if you see things like Russian and French and other courses in that category, it does not mean that the course is in Russian or is in French. It means that the course topic or the author is French or Russian related. So French humanities could be all about the African-American experience for French speaking people in France. And it could talk about their, the, the art, the music, the literature, the, um, all the experiences that occur for African-Americans who actually migrated to France or were slaves in France. It could be anything. So it will not be taught in French. All right. So the courses I recommend for Divisional A, um, a lot of people take the humanities courses because it encompasses a little bit of everything and it's not just one title. So um, it'll be all about uh, art, literature, music, and theater uh, surrounding colonial, Roman. It could be a little bit of everything, all right? Another course, and you can take the humanities in the classics, the Spanish, the humanities, the English version, any one of the humanities is perfectly fine. Another one will be French 106, which is African films. This course is basically a lecture course, but it's also kind of like um, communications because you do watch African films and then you discuss and write synopsis on those African films. Um, another course is going to be Spanish Women in Literature. It's not being offered this semester, but this is a good course for students to take. Everyone who has taken it has, good, have, has given me good feedback on it. Um, so if you do see that, that's a good option for you to take. Portuguese 700, which is Afro-Brazilian film. This course, and I'll talk about 700 courses later, right now it's not something you need to worry about. Um, Afro-Brazilian film is a very good course. Let me tell you, this course goes really, really fast. It's housed in the Portuguese language department, um, and it's, talked, it's taught by Dr. Jacoby, not Jacoby, Elicio, Dr. Elicio. Um, but it's a really good class and it goes very fast. He actually has three, which is Afro-Brazilian film, literature, and music. So if you see any of the Portuguese 700s, they will count towards your divisional A category. Another one is classical mythology. If you are interested in any of the mythology themes, Zeus, the gods, the Iliad, any of those, then this will be a good cop, um, topic for you to choose. Another reason I um, actually make biology majors take this course because it's a lot of information to grasp. It teaches you how to write and how to memorize and um, study. So if you're taking the DAT or the MCAT or the LSAT, this will be a good course. Um, a lot of the courses that you're gonna take in your divisionals will require you to write. If you're going to law school or medical school, you will need to learn how to write. So don't dodge those courses. The better you are as a writer, the better chance you are of going um, professional after you graduate, okay? So those will be some of the highlights of the divisionals, but take your time, use the sheet that I gave you and go through which ones you wanna take, all right? So for this sake of this scheme, I'm going to pick, let's see which one fits my schedule because that's really all that matters. We're going to try Portuguese. Oh, it's online, so it doesn't really matter. So let's take um, Portuguese 700. 
Um, and I'm going to cut and paste the CRN number. And you will have to choose maybe two or three of these courses um, because you may not get your um, perfect course. So you may have to choose three options for a divisional A. And since Portuguese is any old time, you can pretty much, um, let's see, what did it say a day? I just said to be determined for everything. Okay, so to be determined for everything, which means it doesn't really have a day or time. So you can either write every day and then kind of block it out on your schedule, um, depending on what other courses you choose. So you don't have anything on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays right now. So you can do just eight o'clock to nine for right now so that you know that that's what you want to take and you can adjust later. Okay, so now my schedule's shaping up a little good. I got a couple early classes, a couple late classes. I'm all over the board, but of course you're gonna make your schedule based on your comfortability. So right now I have what, three, six, nine, 12, 13. Wait, three, six, nine, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I'm at 18 right now, so I'm gonna stop. There aren't any really two credit or one credit classes about the size HHPL. So if you wanna switch this out and add an HHPL course, remember some of your courses will be four credits, so it will be the same amount of classes. It will just be more credits, all right? Now, I have my spring schedule outlined. If I decide that I wanna continue, I can continue and decide I wanna take some summer courses. So if you wanna take some summer courses here at Howard, I always recommend that you do the HHPL courses because they're only one credit, okay? If you're taking courses outside of Howard, you can still fill in these summer sessions because they break up the same way at other schools. Um, I usually recommend students take their second math there if they want to. Um, if you are doing a physics minor or anything like that, um, our physics here at Howard is about five credits. So when they were taking it at Howard, bio majors would take HHPL, which would be swimming, and they would take physics. And then if they got the grant, that would be their total six credits, and then um, they would be done. Now, we've done our fall 2020, we've done our spring 2021 you now know how to make a schedule. So you can continue on and do your fall 2021 and your spring 2022. You can save this and then do another copy and then you could do a four year schedule. The purpose of you doing this in two year increments is so that you can submit it to your advisor and say, Ms. Young, I've created my schedule. Um, can you just take a look and make sure that I have everything that I need? This is the easiest way for you to get the most efficient advising, because if we have to sit there one by one and go through with you on how to make your schedule, you don't become independent. And then you come in every time something goes wrong. But if you learn how to add these to your sheet, you can be stress-free and you can submit it to your advisor every semester and you won't have to wait in line or schedule unnecessary appointments. You're basically saying I've done all my scheme, can you take a look and make sure that everything is included um, that I may, uh, that I, I might have missed? Um, or um, is there any other options like for electives? Everyone has to take two electives, but it may not be showing on your scheme. So we would calculate all of your credits at the end of everything to make sure that at the end of it, you're gonna make 120. If we come up short, then we know that you may have not taken your two general electives, and then that will be something we can discuss, like you doing an internship or um, you doing research for credit, okay? So um, if you decide to um, go ahead and do your two-year and your four-year scheme, remember to keep it kind of general and just do major, minor, 
each semester. If you keep that combination of your major and your minor requirements and then all of your other co-ops requirements, then you will stay on track to completing your degree. For any reason that you cannot get in a major or a minor course, so let's just say you register for a major course, but you weren't able to get into your minor course, then double up on your major so that the next semester you can double up on a minor course. Okay. Um, for those who would be doing medical school, you can choose a minor of biology or chemistry is what we recommend. And then your minor requirement will just be your chem course, chem one, chem two, chem three, until you finish that minor and the same thing for your biology degree. If you're doing any other minor like sociology or anything like that, you do not have prereqs on your courses. You can take them in any order. So you can double up as many times as you like. Okay, um, I'll stop here and, and go for questions really quickly and then I'll go into the next mode of what you need to know to be successful. So you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, I was wondering, how do we go about declaring a minor? Okay, so for the new people who just came in the room, you cannot declare your major and your minor until January. And what I'll do is I'll send an email out to you and I'll give you a day where everyone can go in, fill out the form and I'll sign off on it, okay? Um, it will not be until January that you can declare your major and your minor. The last deadline, the absolutely last time that you can declare a minor is gonna be the end of your sophomore year because at that time you will run out of COAS and you will be short on major courses that you will need in order to make a full schedule. So you will have to declare a minor at that time in order to continue on into your junior and your senior year. So right now, this should be an exploration for you. And I'll go back to the degree works because your divisional A, B, and C, and D categories are courses in a minor. So if you're interested in being an Afro Studies minor, the first course in the Afro Studies minor is Intro to African American Studies. You can take it as a divisional. If you decide to make it your major, then that course will then drop down and you will now get an option to take something else as a divisional, okay? So use this opportunity to, in your divisionals, to pick courses that you may be thinking of considering as a minor. So if you're thinking about doing poly, then the first course in poly is P-O-L-S-001, Intro to Political Science. If you're interested in being a sociology minor, then the first course is going to be Intro to Sociology 001. And your clue is going to be the 00 in front of it. And that's how you know. All right, econ minors are here as well. History minors, Intro to History. Um, if you're trying to do a science minor, it's going to be the same thing, biology 101. Um, math, the first course is going to be math 156, which is Calc 1. Chemistry, Chem 1. Psych 050 will be the only course that does not count towards anything as a major. It will always be just the divisional D or a general elective to you. Okay. Next question. Yes. Um, how, how, how many um, health and like activity courses do we need? So your degree works tells you how many. So you need to go onto your degree works and you can look. So everyone is required swimming, but because of the pandemic, it is um, technically waived. So in lieu of the swimming, you'll take an extra either lecture or activity. So everyone is required one swimming, one health, and two activities. But for the sake of this, since swimming is exempted, you will either do two health lectures or three activities. Next. Yes, I've asked this in the chat and uh, Carrie was able to answer it, but I just wanted to make sure that I understand. Um, Coming into, uh, as a freshman, I had transfer credits for my, for the English comp one and two, mm -hmm. but I'm currently taking one of the English that's, I guess is classified as freshman composition. 
So okay. I'm guessing my uh, credits didn't transfer over in that department. So I was wondering, will it, if if I were to able to make sure that it was transferred over, does that grade count for this semester or the course I'm currently taking? So you if have. So you have two options. What could have happened is if it was a transfer credit from the uni another university, um, the registrar only transfers in courses that are general courses. Once the course becomes too detailed in nature, then they require that the department review it and tell them what the course actually is. So it could be that the course isn't something that they've normally transferred over and they need it more detail. And they usually are supposed to tell you to get somebody from the English department to review it. Um, so it is a possibility you still could get that course transferred in. Now, if you're currently sitting in the course um, that you think is the equivalent, it will only count one time. So you're either going to take the transfer credit or you're going to take the letter grade. Okay. So and you'll need to contact me directly so that I can look and make sure that what you think, because a lot of people think that they took an English writing course, but at Howard it's actually a literature course. So it okay. could have came over. It just didn't come over as the composition. Okay. So English composition and then the course that I'm in now is, is it's, expository writing literature are two different things correct okay. so um let's see which one is expository okay so english 102 that's composition one right english 102 right okay. but you could have transferred the course that you took at the other college could have been a different course here at howard so it could have came in as engl okay or it could have came in as a higher level English. It could have came in as ENGW 103 or 105. So um, go to your transcript and see what, what the ENGW or ENGL codes are. And if you don't see anything but just one and you know you took two Englishes, then contact me and then I can look at your transcript from the other school and then we can determine if it didn't come in if it was transferred and was just changed, Howard just changed the name of it. Okay, thank you. What, the same thing for my math as well. Um, in high school, well, while in high school, my senior year, I took a course that should have exempted me from college algebra. But I'm guessing if even if I didn't take the placement test, they would still place me in college algebra, correct? If you took the AP or IB test and you got a high enough score, you were automatically exempted from math. You, if you were placed in a math that you think is equivalent, um, you, you could have just alerted us. But um, it looks like I'm going to have to look at your schedule. So just email me and then we'll take a look and I'll make sure you're in the right things. And if you're not in the right things, then it's not really that big of an issue as a freshman. Remember, you have two general electives that you must complete. So yeah. those courses will simply just drop to general electives. So it will be less credits that you actually have to complete to get to 120. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. I'll be sure to email you. Okay. Any other questions about making a schedule before I go on to your next part of what you need to know to stay on track? I have a question. Mm -hmm. So if I'm taking um, English or ENGW 102 right now, I would have to take 103 for next semester? Correct. And then I took the math placement test during the summer. How would I like um, get my score? so then I can be placed in the correct math. Just email me and I'll tell you what math you placed in. Okay, all right, thank That's you. That's for anybody. If you've taken a math placement and you are not sure um, because you were not placed in the math, which math you scored in, just, um, just put the subject math placement score and just ask me in the email and I'll let you know what math you should register for. I have a I question. Have another. Oh, sorry. You could go. Okay, so I, right now, I'm in psychology 016, but I took, like, the AP test and stuff, so would I still have, like, last year or whatever, so would I still have to take psychology 001, or, like, what would I have to take next semester? So you would still need psych 001. So keep in mind, psych majors, 
high school graduates, um, college freshmen right now. If you took A, B, A, P, or I, B, and you took the exam and you tested out of any psychology course or you got a credit, it will be for a non-major psych course. You cannot test out of a, B, a, P, or I, B for any psych major courses. So any transfer credit that you came in with is usually Psych 050. And remember, I said that that is not going towards anything but a Divisional D or a general education course. So everyone has to take Psych 001 as a Psych major or minor. Okay, I have a question about the math placement exam. Mm -hmm. So. What if you feel that you scored incorrectly for the um, math course that you should be taking? Because I know, like, I know that my score was lower, but, but I didn't have a calculator or any type of any information, and I took it much later in the summer when I got dumber. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give you two options for the math placement, because um, a lot of people were asking me, could they retake it? Um, you can ask if you can retake it. I don't handle the math placement, so I don't know what the rule is for that this year. So you can always ask. Uh, number two, you do not have to take your math at Howard University, okay? You can take it at a community college and then transfer the math in and complete the requirement. If you take it over the summer at a community college, you can register for any math at, that you want or they place you in, whatever the case may be. Um, you can always start at a basic level math here at Howard and, and just finish out with your two maths. If you're not going to medical school, um, then it's really no specific math that the psych department is really going to make you take. They only recommend um, statistics because you have a psychology statistics that is not a math, but it should help prepare you for that course. But other than that, you can take any of the math. So those will be my two options. You can ask to see if you can retake the course, or you can take the course at a community college of any math that you like and just transfer it in as your requirement. I'll take one more question before I move to your second part. Hi, um, I came in late. Um, how did you get to the academic plan um, layout? It's, it's in the email that I sent you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I actually have another question. Yes. So, like, for example, if I'm looking at being or like going on the pre-med track, where would you recommend putting like a bio or chem class? Um, so on your academic plan, Remember, all psych majors, if you don't remember anything else, remember, pick your psych course first, always your, your next psych course, and then you pick your minor or your other psych course second. Because if you do not finish your major and your minor, you cannot get your degree regardless. So they are priority over everything else, even your co-op requirements, okay? But if you are not able to get in a major or a minor class, you double up on something else that you need so that you can have space the next semester to double up on the courses you did not get this semester. So Psych 002 will be your next class, and then you will add your minor. So if, if you are a bio minor, it's going to be bio 101. If you're going to do a chemistry minor, it's going to be chem 003 and chem 005 because you have to do those separately okay all right if you're not sure what you want to do your minor in just choose another psych major elective for right now and then you can spend that time choosing a divisional to help you figure it out okay all right thank you, can, you. you're welcome you can also start your language as well so if you're not sure what you want to do as a minor you can actually add your language Keep in mind, your languages are up here. The only two languages not shown are Amharic and Latin, but you can do those and they do count as foreign language. Sign language does not count as a foreign language, nor do we have it. 
All right. Any other questions about that? Um, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, right now I'm a psych major, but I want to minor in health management. Is that possible or would I have to make health management my major and psychology my minor? You, you would have to talk to the School of Nursing and Allied Health to determine if you could, even if you switched as a major, would you be allowed to do a minor? Health, health management is under the School of Allied Health, and I don't know that they accept minors, and COAS does not accept minors from health um, in the School of Nursing and Allied Health. So there is no minor that you can do as a COAS major. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So before I go on, I'm going to let Carrie show you guys how to go into Bison Web and register really quickly, and then I'll go back to the second part of how to stay on track to graduate. I'm sorry, can I ask one more thing? Mm -hmm. um, but, um, is there a way that you could show me how to drop a course as well? if you're going to show how to register for one. Absolutely. Because I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. I'm muted. Okay, so I'm doing this. Okay, can everybody see the screen? Yes. Yeah. I can't, okay. Um, let's see. So, yeah, so, uh, sorry, it's a lot of clutter on the screen. So, yeah, so when you start registering next semester, um, you're going to get an email and it's going to have your alternate pin in it. And you need your alternate pin because when you go to register, you have to type in this number right here to actually like even get into the system for Bison Web, or you won't be able to register. Um, registration begins at 9 a.m., please, and I mean, please do not um, register at 10 o'clock, don't register at 11 o'clock, register at 9, 9 a.m. Eastern time, please don't wait. These classes will fill immediately, especially as a freshman. You will have the perfect schedule, and you will wait five minutes, and your courses will be gone. It is just college life. It is an extremely stressful time, and it might not work right away, but as you progress through Howard, you will get better at it. And I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be a stressful time, your first time doing it, especially because you're not on campus. You will have to send a lot of emails probably. Um, it's not to scare you, it's just to prepare you guys for this. So when you guys walk into Bison Web and you log in and everything, you're going to click on the student services tab and you're gonna go to add drop classes. Um, and during add drop classes, you're going to have a specific day. So um, honor students and athletes might register on, they normally register on a Friday. Um, seniors normally register on a Monday or a Tuesday. Then it's juniors uh, on a Tuesday, sophomores on a Wednesday, and freshmen on a Friday. So you're going to register and you have to, you're assigned that by your credit level. So if you have 59 credits, well, if you have 59 credits, you are still a sophomore and you're not a junior. And remember your credit limit because you might, you might think you're a junior, but you're actually a sophomore. So you're going to go here and you're going to click on the term and you're going to be prompted with your alternate pin. So you're going to type in your alternate pin and you're going to come in here and now you're going to see your course and everything. So these are the courses I'm registered for right now. I can't actually search because like it's not a registration period or anything, but when you, um, when you have to register and everything, there's gonna be a little search bar here. There's gonna be about five or six and you're gonna type in this CRN. You're gonna type in the CRN, you can type in multiple ones at once and you can press submit. And it's gonna register you for all the courses that you're allowed. If you register for, if you type in six of these, um, if you type in six of these little codes, and you, four of them might go through, and two of them might not. You're going to get a registration error. Keep that registration error, screenshot it, write it down, whatever. And when you email people, tell them this is the registration error you're getting, whether it's a departmental error, a prerequisite error. There might be an error for the reason. And when people are trying to help you, they need to know what your actual issue is 
or they won't be able to type in the necessary things to help you in the system. If it's a departmental error, go straight to the department and they should be able to help you. If it's a prerequisite, um, you probably aren't eligible for, eligible for the course, I would um, email the department as well. I would try to avoid emailing um, Ms. Young and the advisors because they might not be able to help you. If it's a financial aid hold or you know a registration hold, you're not gonna be able to register because you have to go to the A building. You have to go to the A building, you have to email the registers or something to get your, um, your hold lifted. Um, whether it's a medical hold, you might have to email the health center or something because if you have a hold, they won't let you register at all. So you're going to type in those codes, bada bing, bada boom. You're going to get all these courses. Um, when you actually have your PIN next semester, when you have your courses, you'll actually be able to go in here and you'll be able to drop courses manually. So let's just say you register for 21 credits because you don't know what courses you're going to take. Um, closer to the semester, you can actually just hit the course withdrawal and it will, will withdraw you from the course um immediately and yeah um i don't really think there's too much else to it um my biggest advice to you is just at 9 a.m please be ready um because it's going to be a very hectic time because there's a lot of you guys and everybody wants to everybody needs the same courses so don't be that person that waits till two and Any questions for Carrie about um, registration? When would we like, what date does like that open? Like you said nine o'clock, but like what, what day? Um, so you should so be able to go to you your up. academic calendar. Um, you guys need to go to Howard's website and download the academic calendar so that you know every semester when you are pre-registering. They already have it scheduled and set up for you guys. So um, it starts, I believe, November 2nd, but I believe that starts um, registration for military and honors first and then um, then it goes backwards after that. So seniors go first, then juniors, then sophomore, and then freshmen. So go download the calendar and then mark it up so that you'll know when everything is going to occur. Thank you. Okay, yes, I was the one that clicked on the add drop classes, but it doesn't show anything. It's just says that I'm not permitted to register at this time. So is that the same reason as to why I wouldn't be able to drop the course that I would like to at this moment? So it could be um, multiple things. Uh, freshmen aren't allowed to go in and drop courses. You actually have to do a form and get approval and signature through me. So if you're trying to go in and do a web drop, it's not going to allow you to do it. Um, okay. I sent you the link in the email is it was for change a major form that link also will take you to the course withdrawal form um, and I sent you an email that says uh, withdrawing from classes guys make sure you're checking your spam because my emails are going to um, people's spam so you may not be getting them but okay. the, with, the withdrawal does have the link to withdraw from courses and the two things that you need to consider if you are trying to withdraw Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Carrie before he goes? Wonderful. Thank you, Carrie. So Carrie is yeah. leaving um, yeah. me for right now. So I will not be checking the chat as of right now. You can reach out to Carrie if you like. Uh, Carrie.Robinson. Um, I'll type my email in the chat. Um, you can reach out to him um, if you have any student so. questions related to registration or anything like that or any, he is a bio major chemistry minor, so he's familiar with the um, med school requirements as well. So if you have any questions and internships, so if you have questions about internships, Carrie definitely can answer those. All right, so we're going to go back to, bye. bye, thank you, Carrie. We're gonna go back to what you need to be successful. It's already one o'clock, so I'm a little bit behind. So let's keep it moving. I'm gonna give you your tools. So 
this is tool number two along with your degree works okay this is called super strong i think they allowed you guys to take it when you came in and some people opted not to i'm not sure but if you're thinking about changing your major or you don't know what you want to declare as your minor this is the tool for you you can set up your account and then go in and take the super strong assessment when you take this super strong assessment it's it's not that long considering all the myers briggs we used to take um, you can take the super strong assessment and it will basically tell you what categories you excel in okay um, this is my actual assessment so i'm showing it to you live um, so I, I scored my top three in social, artistic, and enterprising. It basically will tell you what you are good at in, in those specific areas and your work style, how you learn your leadership skills and your risk taking, what you're like as a team member and or as a team leader. And then it will give you your career interests and it'll let you pick which ones you like and which ones you don't like. And then once you pick the ones you like, so you can go into like, um, and then you'll be able to click on and see or save the ratings and then go into each one of these and choose. Let's go choose. And you'll be able to go in and see your career interest. And you'll be able to click on each one and see what careers are aligned with the ones that you want. So I'm going to go down to education because I always get this. Um, I used to be a teacher, so that I'm thinking that's why I always get this. So for right now, let's say school psychologist. And it will give me a description of the school psychologist, what activities they do, the salary range for each one, what the outlook it is. And this is important because um, if we're talking about your rate of return on your degree, you want to be able to graduate from Howard University and find employment. So you need to be picking something that um, is gonna help you uh, fulfill your personal goals and desires and make you happy, but also give you an income where you can live. Um, and it's also opportunity for you to be enterprising. So if you got the option as an enterprising, that means that's that's you being able to start your own business so you need to be looking at what areas you could possibly fill in the gaps so if the rate is very low in that area that may mean you need to start your own business in that area because there is a need all right it will also tell you the level of education you need to um, obtain it how long you need to go for school um, and other jobs and education jobs related to that field. So if you don't want to be a school psychologist, you may want to do clinical psychology or developmental. Um, for all the psych majors, this will be something that's ideal for you. Even if you know you want to do psychology and you may not know exactly what you want to do in psychology, you can click on these options and see what leads you to the next connection, to the next connection, and what may interest you, okay? Um, I gave you the link in your email that you got today. Um, it basically will say super, super strong assessment. So you can click on that and you can do the assessment at your leisure. Um, and you can go through and look at all of them to see what interests you. Okay, This will help you pick your minor. This will help you pick your major. Please, please, please do not follow a degree or major that other people have influenced you to do because that will be a waste of time and money and you will not be happy so pursue something that you're going to excel in even if you're going to medical school you do not have to do a biology degree you can do any major here at howard and still take the prerequisites to get into medical school but it looks much better if you're in a degree where you're excelling and getting a 4.0 rather than taking a major you don't like just to get somewhere that you may not get because you don't have the GPA, okay? So take your time, go to um, the uh, super strong assessment and complete that, okay? Um, the next one I'll talk about will be your, your, um,
sorry, I thought I had it open, your pre-med requirements for those who want to go to medical school or dental school, whatever the case may be. So these are your pre-med requirements highlighted in yellow. So if you are trying to go to medical school, everything is already really built into the degree. So you're really not going outside of the scheme to meet the requirements. You are just being selective in what you choose to take. So we recommend either a minor in chemistry or a minor in bio. I usually say chemistry because all of the courses that you need per the pre-med requirements are literally the minor in chemistry. Whereas bio, you only need a select few courses that really don't make up the minor, but you can take it and I'll tell you how to make those courses actually fit into the pre-med requirement. So your foundation is a site, usually site 050, which is what that non-major course is, is usually recommended for your MCAT. But because you're taking a higher level um, psychology course, that could also be your um, intro to site class. Neuropsych is helpful in the pre-med program, even though it's not required. It is one of those courses that they um, will recommend for physician's assistant and also nursing. So if you decide not to go to medical school, but do nursing or physician's assistant, neuropsychology is a good class to take. And that is included as an elective for you. Bio 1 and 2 will count as your divisional Ds. Remember, I said your math will count as your divisional Ds as well but you're not gonna get that double credit. You're only gonna get that uh, credits for that math in the math category. So these bio 101 and 102 will be the credit that you get for the divisional D. All right, your math is already included. So it's, you're not taking that outside of the scheme. And then you have your general elective requirements. You can do genetics and micro, which is always recommended. Um, also molecular biology, comparative anatomy, those will also be electives for you. And then physics one and two will be your other general elective courses. So essentially you are not taking anything outside of your scheme. You have actually fit everything in and finished your degree within four years. It is using the academic plan that I showed you and actually just fitting in your courses in the correct spot. So your site and then your minor course. Once you finish your minor, then you'll add in the elective course like physics or anything else that you may need as you finish your English and you finish your math requirements. So as things drop off, then you're adding your pre-med requirements to complete everything else, okay? All right, so how to declare a major and a minor, which is everyone wants to know. So you cannot declare your major and your minor yet, um, but I'm gonna go to the website. It is under the office of um, the registrar and they have a, under the office of the registrar, you will see the link for forms. Under these forms, they have the change of major, which is how you declare your major and your minor. If you are switching schools, then you are switching down to the intro university transfer because you are now transferring between schools. If you're staying within COAS, then you will complete the major and the minor. Even if you're not planning on changing your major, you will need to do this form for a declaration of the minor. Okay, when you complete the form, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing, it will give you the option, I'll do it on a Word document so that you can see it. So when you do the form, it will give you two, four options, well, six options. So it will be a two category, so your major your major to your major. And then it'll give you another option, which will be your concentration to your concentration. And then your minor to your minor. So in order for you to not get your form denied, you have to put this 
um, as I tell you to. And you can screenshot this or take a picture while I'm typing it. Your current major is psychology and you do not want to change it. So if you don't want to change it, then it will be psychology to psychology. This lets the Office of the Registrar know that there is no change. You want it to still say psychology. If you do NA, if you do this to NA to psychology, then they will also know that there is no change. Concentration, because you are a psychology major, you do not have a concentration. So you do not need to fill this out. It would be NA to NA. And if you are declaring a minor, that means you did not have a minor before. So it will be NA to whatever you now want that minor to be. So if it's gonna be chemistry, then it will be NA to chemistry. If you are double minoring or double majoring, so let's say you want a double major, why you would do that, I'm not sure, but we can discuss it. Um, if you want a double major in psychology, um, you would do psychology to biology and psychology. Because you are now telling them I'm moving from one major to two majors. Biology does not have a concentration, so you are still at NA to NA. And I, if you are a double major, you are not required to have a minor, but if you want to have a minor and you don't have one already, you would do NA to chemistry. And if you wanted to double minor, you would do chemistry and sociology. Okay, so that would be how you change the major or minor form. And you cannot do this until January, until the spring semester starts. So it's not something dire that's going to hurt you at the moment. This is the most important part for people who are changing their major. So if you want to change your major, then you need to do the what if scenario. You will go to 2016, 2017, and you will pick the major or the minor that you want to change to. So if you're thinking about getting out of psych and doing political science, because now you want to go to law school because you're in the political science mate, um, intro course, you do the major of political science, but you want to keep the psych minor because you don't know. You add the psych minor here, and then you do process what if. So this is the scenario that it will give you of what it will look like if you decide to change your major to anything else. So your co-ops requirements, as long as you stay in co-ops, will stay the same with the exception of your divisionals will change. As a psych major, you had divisional Cs, but now as a poli sci major, you do not have divisional Cs. You have more divisional Ds now, okay? And then now here's your poly major and here's your psych major, okay? Going back to what if, if you're switching out of the College of Arts and Sciences, so somebody said they wanted to do health education, um, health management. So if you want to do health management, click on health management. You can choose a minor, but you have to find out from Allied Health if they allow you to do a minor outside of the major because some majors are so extensive, it's already built in to a minor. Like biology already has a built-in minor of chemistry, even though you have to declare it. Um, so you might want to keep the psych minor. So you would do major health management, psychology minor, and then you would do process what if, and now it's gonna give you the scenario of what it would look like if you change to health education, health management. So these are the courses for health management here. Now, I will tell you, if you're planning for this to switch out of the school, the most important part for you to know right now is to continue to look at the College of Arts and Science courses because some of the same requirements that you are required to fulfill as a health management major in the Allied um, School of Allied Health will be some of the same requirements that you have to fulfill in College of Arts and Sciences. And since you're still a College of Arts and Science student, you can register for the same courses and still be on track even if you switch your major because you still have to fulfill the same amount of requirements. For example, if you wanted to go to the School of Nursing, you don't need a minor for nursing. But 
in the school of nursing their prerequisite general education requirements are the same as some of the courses in bio so you can be safe in picking these courses to register for um, anything that's not a uh, actual nursing course like bio 101 is in coos chem is in coos soci and math are in coos psych is in coos so anything that's in coos you can still register for these courses and still be on track to possibly get into the nursing program because you can't start any nursing classes until you finish your prereqs and be accepted anyway so this is what i recommend for anyone that's in, interested in changing their major out of the College of Arts and Sciences is to pay attention to the general education courses and register for those courses now until you get notification that you're accepted into the other school and then you will be able to adjust your schedule based on advising for that school. And you can do the same thing for business. If you're interested in going to business, you can look at accounting and they don't really, I don't think they need a minor, but you can choose one um and then you would do process what if and then look at the general education requirements for the school of business and you will see some of the same requirements so you would just choose those as a co-op major and then when you get accepted into the school you'll have them review it and make sure you're taking the courses that will still keep you on track to finish your business degree okay um there are a bunch of tips and tricks that I can give you for the how to use your degree work so uh, I'm just going to give it to you very quickly so you can always go to what if history to see anything that you've done in your what if scenario it calculates and captures the time that you did it only so anytime that you add anything new you'll have to do a, re a new one and then you can do save as PDF. I recommend every semester, once you register for your classes and add drop has now ended, that you print out your PDF. The reason I ask you to do that is because systems go down. And if anything were to occur and it wasn't up and running, you would then still have your checklist of what you can take. And you can manually go through, this is still gonna be your scheme. You can manually go through and check off everything. And then once, Degree works becomes up and running again, or the networks are up and running. Um, you can uh, update it, but you'll always know what you need to register for if you can't get in the system. All right, there is the look ahead option. This is for people who are, are currently in the major that they want to pursue and they don't plan on changing it at this time. So if you want to take a class, but you don't know where it's going to show up on your scheme sorry so so we're going to do psych i don't think it's going to work on mine because i have a dummy account but i'll show you and i'm going to do a bio minor and i want to know if bio b y o l b i o l <laughs> 101 what show up on my scheme so i'm going to do process what if and then now it's going to show me where that bio is now going to show up so i can put in any class that i'm not sure about i just heard about a portuguese class or something coming up i can put that anywhere and will tell me exactly where it will show up my scheme so you never really have to look for an advisor to find out if this counts you can always do a what if scenario for the major and the minor that you plan to uh, pursue and then do the um, look ahead and the look ahead for the what if is already at the bottom. This look ahead will only be for those who are already in the major that they want to pursue and they're looking currently for a class. Okay. And the last trick that I will show you. So if you're registering for classes, like we said you're registering for your classes and like carrie said you put all, all the crn numbers in the block right and i'll show you what that looks like hold on okay so this is what the um so this is what it actually looks like So this is what it actually looks like the blocks 
Oh, I want to stay up. Um, so if you can see down here, these are the blocks that show up on your actual degree um, Bison web when it's time for you to register. You put the CRN numbers in these blocks. You put in maybe all five of your classes and you only got four. So you need one more class really quickly um, and all the options you choose are full. This is the fastest way to find another class before somebody snags it up. So you go into pick a major and then you do health sciences. That's in the School of Nursing and Allied Health. The reason you're going to choose health sciences is because health sciences has a secret that no one really knows, but it has what's called these at signs, okay? And this only will work for you until you become a sophomore. And then once you become a sophomore, you've taken too many classes and this won't work. Um, but if you click on the at sign, it will open up every class that's available. So you can look and see what's available all at one time, get the CRN number, click to the other screen, put it in, boom, you're in the class. So instead of you going through each one class and clicking on it and clicking on it and clicking on it and seeing how many seats, you can see all of this at one time and just cut and paste the CRN number, put it back in your box and then take that class. Okay, so not even, I don't even give that tip out to everyone. So that is a big tip and I suggest you use it if you want to get in your courses faster. So your foundation is a site. If you register for, try to get in 14094 and it was full and you're trying to see what else is left really quickly, you just come in, see what's left, what fits your schedule, add it in the block and then you're now in that section. Okay. The good thing about registering for the spring is you have the spring you have the winter break, so things may change. People may not come back. So seats may open up, so you'll have to watch during the break, okay? All right, I think I've, I think I've done everything. So I'm gonna open it up just for questions and feel free to ask whatever you like because your question may help somebody else. Okay, I have a question. Yes. I'm currently filling out the uh, the ad drop, I mean the withdrawal form, and I was wondering how can I find the section for the name of the course? What's so I looked on my schedule, I found the CRN number, but I don't know what the section. The section is the two digit number right next to the course. So, let's see if we can open something up. So you'll see the CRN number and then the section will be that two digit number. Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing my screen, hold on. All right, so the two digit number right next to the course is going to be the section number. Two, oh, okay, okay. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. For the concentration, I know myself and some others want to declare pre-med track. Would that happen under the concentration or is it, because I know it's just a scheme. So I was going to put it on there, that. There is no concentration of pre-med, so you can't declare it as a concentration. Okay, and so I would just leave it blank when I'm declaring a minor. Correct. The pre-med okay. track is through, we have a pre-health advisor pre-health professionals um, department. So you pretty much follow the pre-med track independently. It isn't one that they have outlined in the system yet where if you take it, if you're a bio major or you're a psych major, then you have to take these courses. The only one that really has a pre-med concentration is math, math. Math majors have a pre-med concentration. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. I have a question. So is there somewhere to go to like see the options for minors? Because I know you were saying like, for example, you could be like a sociology minor, but like would, could you, is there a possibility that you could be a social work minor or like? No, so at Howard it's not called social work. So I'm gonna show you the two places to find the minors, okay? 
Um, so in your what if scenario, that's the mm -hmm. first one. So you'll choose your psych major and it won't work unless you always choose a major. So always choose your psychology major. And I always say choose 2016, 2017, because your, your maps will default to the current year. Um, and then these are your list of minors. Okay. And then the second option is to go to the Howard website and then go to academics. And then you'll see colleges, schools and colleges, fields of study. Um, I usually do schools and colleges. It's just easier for me to do arts and sciences. Um, they've changed the website. So let's go to majors and minors. And now you can see all the majors and minors. So majority of the things in COAS can be, that are majors can be minors. There may be only a select few, like human um, performance can't be a minor. Um, let me just think. It's only a few that cannot be a minor. But you okay, can click on each you. one to see which one you're interested in doing. Thank you. Um, my question also would be, um, when do you, uh, I know that you're recording this session, so when will you have it available just so we can go back? I may go back and watch it because I did miss a few things in the beginning. Okay. So I'm going to try to upload it today, um, but I know I have to cut and paste because I don't know. I think it'll be in like parts because that's how I don't know if I can upload all of the video at one time on um, YouTube. I'll have to find out, but it'll definitely be up there on Monday. Okay. Okay, great. Next question. Um, hi, yes, I have a question. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm taking a math right now, a math 006, but then um, I got the credit transferred from my um, high school. So I wanted to know what would happen to like the grade that I get in the course and would it still count towards my overall GPA? No, if it's the exact same course, did they transfer in math 006 and you're in 006? Yeah. Okay, so no, you're only going to get credit one time for it because it's the exact same class. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You do have the option, if you're already in the class, you have two options you can withdraw. If you don't want to withdraw, then you can ask that the transfer credit be removed and you can just accept the credit for the MAV 006 that you're in. Because the transfer credit, it will not count towards your GPA. So you may want to keep the class that you're in to help boost the GPA. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. You had to unmute yourself. I have a question. So how many um, classes can you register um, like at once when we have to register for classes? When it's time for you to register for classes, your max is going to probably be 18. Okay. It's gonna be set at 18. If you reach 3.0 or higher this semester, then you can email me and I can put in a request for you to do over 18. However, I do not recommend that for anyone doing online courses or freshmen. Wait until you become a, a sophomore in your spring semester to try to do a 21 credit because you, have, you would have generated enough or a high enough GPA so that if, it's, if it doesn't turn out well, you're not falling into the academic probation range. So... I know a lot of people want to try to take as many classes as they can to finish early to minimize debt, but you actually will end up hurting yourself if you can't pass the classes or you have to withdraw. It becomes a bigger issue. So um, if you take 15 to 18 credits or more, you will definitely cut down your time. If you add in the summer, you will cut down your time. It's not always about trying to lop on so much in one semester. Just space it out 
and do it in a timely fashion so you can get the best GPA and you can graduate in time or early. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question. If you, may, if you get below a 2.0, so the 2.0 is a minimum GPA this semester. If you get below um, 2.0, you will become academically on probation and you may receive an email saying that you have been SAP suspended. Um, and that simply means that academically, you're probationary. We're watching you. You need to come see us. We need to see what you're not doing or what you think um, is working and it's not working to kind of help you figure out how to get back on track so that you're not on academic probation again. If you become SAP suspended, that is a financial aid issue. And they may send you a letter saying, listen, we're going to suspend your aid because we've given you 100% of the money to complete 100% of what you register for. And you only completed maybe 30% of what you register for. Why should we continue to give you money? You're not progressing. So then you'll have to do an appeal to come back and say that you've been to an advisor, you've been counseled, and you now know the era of your ways. And they may let you back in to get your aid and um, show that you can actually do it. So uh, as long as you stay above a 2.0, you don't run the, rank, the risk of actually becoming academically um, on probation. However, you can still run the risk of being on probation if you withdraw or fail courses. So that is most important about being on track because everyone asks that question, but they don't know actually what it means. So if you fail courses or you withdraw from courses consistently, you are now off track. If you do not take the courses that go towards your major, you are now off track. Um, because the university is giving you 120 credits, they've told you what classes you need to complete in order to fulfill that. If you fail or withdraw, you're now, you now still have to do those courses and then you have to retake any courses that you fail. So now you're now adding time to the amount of time you will be here. And remember, you can graduate or can receive your degree in any semester. However, there is only one ceremony in the spring. So the more classes you fail, the more you're gonna add back onto your, your time frame of being here. Um, failing four classes, basically will add a semester because that's 12 credits. So every time that you fail a course in one semester, you're adding another semester and so on and so forth. So um, just remember your track is fine as long as you're taking classes that goes towards completing your degree. You aren't consistently failing or withdrawing from classes. Any other questions? Okay, so the last thing will be is um, if you want to, I am doing drop-ins on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. What does that mean? That means you can't schedule an appointment. Because y'all schedules are all over the place, some of y'all have schedules, um, but you actually don't meet at that time for classes and things like that. Sometimes the professors let y'all out early or don't have class, so you schedule a meeting, but you don't show. So rather than have appointments, I'm actually just doing drop-ins on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. And then I have technology tools on Thursdays at three o'clock and then psych sessions specifically for psych majors every Friday for the month of October before registration. So I've attached that directions on how to actually do a drop-in. You schedule on the actual day that you can drop in. So if it's Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, you would just go to ous.howard.edu and you would click on drop in and then you will see what times I'm available and I'll send you the link to come into the Zoom room and meet with me. The best time to do a drop in is once you finish your scheme for the psych major. Then we can go over it really quickly. Um, I can ask you a few questions. It will take maybe 15 to 20 minutes um, at the most just to make sure that you know what you're, what you're responsible for here. And then you can go off knowing that your two-year plan is complete and you can make sure that you register for freshman year and sophomore year 
and then you'll do another plan for junior and then submit it. And then senior year, you do not see an advisor because it's now time to graduate. You've done three years of advising. There's no advising left for you to do, okay? So review the how to make a drop-in sheet, which was attached to the email that you got earlier. If you did not receive it, feel free to email me and I'll resend it to you. Any other questions? If there are no other questions, then I'll go ahead and close the session and end the recording. All right, great. I'm, I'm hoping that this was helpful to everyone and has calmed some of your nerves about what you need to do. Um, feel free to email me um, to ask any other questions or to do the drop-in. Thank you for coming today. Feel free to tell your friends to drop into the next one on Friday.